Okay, so third tutorial. Um, I just wanted to go over something that I forgot to mention last time when it comes to the keyframes. So let's just pull up something. So here's our blue balls thing, right? Double click this from your files, drag it on here. And then, uh, oh yeah, so there's this tool, by the way, so you see these red, this red arrow here, my cursor turns red when I go to the edge of a file here, or on our timeline, I can just drag it out bigger, right, so it lasts longer, I forgot to mention that, you can do it from the other side too, make it a little smaller, that way you don't always have to use the cut tool. So what I wanted to mention that I didn't mention last time was, if I want this to move instead of... Hold on, I gotta double click this, make sure I'm on the right thing here. There we go. Um, so instead of just changing the values when it comes to keyframes, so remember if I put a keyframe for position and scale just to set this at this point in time, it's going to look this big and be in this position. Um, if I move this over and just move it from here, whereas last time I told you guys to use the values over here, right click and hold and drag so instead of doing that you can just grab it manually here and see how there's the line the kind of diagonal line showing you where it's gonna move so if you do that it'll make a keyframe for you here automatically right let's say I want it to get bigger as well right so you can just do it manually right on the timeline it's just that sometimes it's easier to use these values here right but usually you could just do it like this right so if I wanted to do that and then again, again, if I wanted to hang out there, make sure there's these this point between these two values where it stays there, right? Where the, these values don't change between these two points. And then you move it, and then you want it to go do something else, right? Like we'll put it over there, and then go smaller or something, right? So what that's going to look like is between these two points, it's probably going to move down here and get a little bigger. And then I'll move back up and get smaller right between these two points. So let's just play that. What so like Dr. Deuce never asked you ever. But like for injections he has. That's what I mean. No, like actual testosterone injections like a one time thing. Yeah. And you do like once every week. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Um, I hope that makes sense with the keyframes and stuff. We'll probably revisit that um, again with a lot of other um, effects. So whenever you put effects on for other things, you're going to probably be playing with keyframes, especially if there's motion and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's just something that I forgot to mention last time. Um, let's just clear these. Okay, so what I wanted to get to this tutorial was... What was it? Oh yeah, masking. Okay, so... I don't know if you guys have seen when we do zoom-ins on people's faces. And then we have them like next to each other. So let's say I wanted to put Sim's face next to Brat's face, like half screen Sim's face, half screen Brat's face, right? So this is where masking comes in. So you go, you click your clip, effect controls appear again, and then you go to opacity, and then you hit the little button here, and then there's going to be all this stuff that comes down, right? So masking, you click this square four-point polygon mask or you can click a different shape but I usually go with the square and then you're gonna get this right so it automatically gives you a mask of this little rectangle here and then you can manipulate how much you want to see right so if I'm gonna put it right around Sims face be on the left side we'll just grab the so you can also if you want you can make another point here so you can, instead of having it just a rectangle, you can make more points by just double clicking. So if I, let's say I want a point down here, a little like that, make another point over here, do that. But for the purpose of just being, it's going to be half of the screen is Sim's face. Um, so it's going to be, like I'm just going to use these regular, I don't need any more, right, right, right. So I'm going to write in on Sim's face here. And then we're just going to go back to motion up here, right? Because this is way too small right now. And we're going to make it bigger, right? So go up to motion, hit that spindle thing, this little arrow button. And then we're going to make the scale bigger. Right? And now it's kind of out of... So make sure that... So since this is highlighted, the mask is highlighted. If you want to make it bigger, you have to go back to motion. And then I'm just going to manually go back to my source or my... app. 
then I'll just play with those. Okay, it's a little bit easier. Or, I mean, same thing, right? You can go back over here and use the values. Down a little bit. Right? So that's one, right? And that's this clip. So now this clip is now just Sim's face, right? So what I'm going to have to do, let's just make this smaller for the sake of this video. So I use the cut tool just to cut that, just to make this smaller. So I'm going to have two of the same clips on top of each other on the layer because I need this one where it's Sim's face and I need the other one where it's Brad's face, right? So let's just copy this and then we'll paste. Does that work? Yeah, if I put this over here, so you got to put your playhead ahead of time because what happened there is if your playhead's here and you press Control V and you, you paste it, it'll cut it off, right? So put where the end of the playhead is. So now you have two of the same clips, right? Because I copied this clip and then I made another one of the same one. So you don't need the audio. Remember I said this bottom part is the audio, but you don't need the audio twice, right? So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to unlink right because automatically you're gonna have the video and the audio linked right but I want it unlinked so I can only get the video and I don't need the audio so I'm gonna delete the audio here so now we have two video clips right and then just one audio clip because of the same clip right so we're gonna go into effect controls here and we're gonna put that mask on Brat's face so let's just for the sake of making this easier for me I need to make it smaller just because I can't see all of it and now it's off the screen so let's back, back, back up was I going the wrong way I'm probably going the wrong way oh no you know what I'm gonna undo that because I think that's the X and Y there we go sorry that's the X so now I'm grabbing the Y right here right just to bring it back up and then I'm gonna move the mask so click the mask here see you, there's a difference between when you're on motion, see it looks like this, you have these buttons to click, so these are the motion buttons, and when you click mask, it gives you the mask um, buttons and all this stuff over here, right? So make sure you're on the right one. So I hit mask, I'm going to move it over to Bat's face, just because I know it's in there. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to go back to motion, and I'm going to make it half the screen again, by just making it bigger. Right? Bring the values down, so position down a bit, move it over, how do I feel about that, move it over a little bit, make it a little bigger, Hit motion again, remember make sure you're on motion, put it set right there, so on the layers, if I put this on top of this, See how there's two clips on top of each other? They're stacked now. I put the playhead here. Now we have both their heads together. And these are the same clip, remember? So they're they're timed the same. So there should be things they're playing at the same time. Yeah, my Adobe's a little bit laggy here, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah it's super laggy. That's okay, you get the idea. Um, maybe if I play it at a slower thing. But anyway, that's that's masking. Um, the other effects you can deal with with masking, if you want to get really fancy about it, is mask feather. It makes it a little bit blurry on the edges. So if I turn down the mask feather, see how this edge became sharper? So I'll put it back up again. See how like if I want it to be really blurry, so the mask just gets the mask feather gets more and more, but Usually it defaulted at 10, just to have a bit of a blur between the two. Um, yeah, masking will come in handy a lot when you're dealing with other effects that you want to put on. So, for example, later we'll do like a mosaic effect, and that'll be like the kind of blurring out. Like, let's say I want to pretend there's like private parts or something that's like blurred out, you know? I've only done that a couple times, but you'll have that on just the masked part because you don't want it on his whole body and his whole face. You'll just have it on like, you know, between his legs or something. So, you know, that's what we use to make some funny sometimes. Um, but uh, let's see what time are we at? We're at nine minutes already. Yeah, so that's probably as far as I can cover this week. But uh, yeah, I mean, again, if you have any questions, hit me up. 
I will try to answer them and try to cover them in my later tutorials. Hope you guys are learning a lot by following this. I think again this will give you a good base for Adobe Premiere and I will catch you guys next time.